Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on simple classification of substances and specifically separation of mixtures. So in the previous lesson we discussed um, other ways of separating solid liquid mixtures and the solid liquid mixtures in this in the previous lesson the solid was insoluble in the liquid so it formed an heterogeneous mixture and we said the best method to use was filtration although you can still use decantation but we said it wasn't that efficient so today we are going to look at the mixture solid liquid mixture still but in this case the solid is soluble in the liquid so the methods that we are going to be discussing today are evaporation and crystallization. Let us begin. So evaporation is used to separate um, a soluble solid from its solution. Remember we defined what solution was in the previous lesson. And what usually happens is that this solid and liquid mixes to form an homogeneous mixture. This mixture is very uniform. And the solid is usually referred to as a solute, while the liquid is called the solvent. We defined this as well previously. And the separate an example of a mixture that we are going to discuss today is the separation of salt from salt solution. So the setup is used. So our salt solution uh, is going to be placed in a watch glass of a, or a evaporating basin and then it's going to be heated using a basin burner and you can see it has been placed on top of some wire mm, uh, gaze so the water is heated and then remember when you heat liquid it turns into gas in this case water is one that is going to be heated because it's a salt solution the salt solution contains water and salt so when it's heated water starts to evaporate or to turn from uh, liquid to gas and you can see the water being a uh, moving evaporating so this process is going to go on and on and on up to a point where the water has completely been removed or has completely evaporated and the salt crystals are left behind in the um, evaporating basin as you can see in the experiment as for crystallization, it actually applies the process of evaporation. Evaporation will also occur in this process, although now we have to be careful in how we allow the water to cool as we heat. We do not heat it to dryness in comparison to the previous uh, experiment. So in crystallization, the crystallization is a process where we obtain crystals from a saturated solution. So a saturated solution is a solution where no more solute can dissolve at a given temperature. So when you are dissolving a certain solution, for example, if you take a 500 ml cup with containing tea, you continue adding more and more spoons of sugar. At some point, you are going to have so much sugar in the, in, the, in the tea such that it cannot dissolve anymore. So that sugar is left at the bottom of your teacup. So we say that solution has reached its saturation point. It means there is no more solute that is going to dissolve at a given temperature. So we usually use um, this opportunity when a solution gets to this point to form crystals. But now we have to integrate the use of heat. So an example is the formation of crystals of salt of copper 2 sulfate. Copper 2 sulfate is a salt. Later on in form 2 you discuss what a salt is. So copper 2 sulfate is a salt. So the table salt is not the only salt that exists. So this is the procedure. So the copper sulfate solution is added. Um, uh, when we say copper sulfate solution, we are saying it's copper sulfate solid that has been added water. So it forms a copper sulfate solution. So that solution is put um, in the evaporating dish and then water is placed in the water bath. So what is going to happen is when we heat um, the water, the water bath the water is going to evaporate and when it evaporates this steam is the one that heats or warms the water bath so heating is happening but it is happening indirectly 
it's not being heated directly on the heat it's being heated through the steam that is being produced by the water bath so copper 2 sulfate crystals are mm, solution sorry are going to be heated and the process is going on and on and then water is going to, to start evaporating start evaporating and then at some point you are going to be dipping a watch glass in this solution to check if the crystals have started to form so you dip a watch glass and then remove that watch glass and check if there is any crystals that are, are formed on the outside parts of the watch glass of the um, rod glass rod if there are crystals that have started forming on the glass rod then we are going to stop the heating process we remove our evaporating dish with some solution in it and then we are going to allow it to cool to cool slowly so if it starts to cool slowly it means evaporation is going to happen slowly so the crystals will begin to form slowly if you compare the crystals that are formed by this process and with the ones that are formed by evaporation you realize the crystals that are formed by this crystallization process are bigger and in 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 bigger shapes and very clear so we are allowing the process of evaporation to occur slowly so in summary we are heating the solution to to saturation saturation means it's a point where some water has already evaporated so the amount of solute left in the solution is so much it has reached a saturation point it cannot dissolve anymore so we allow it to evaporate slowly so that now the crystals can begin to form so a crystal is a solid that consists of particles arranged in an orderly repetitive manner and then that solution after the crystals are formed there is a solution that is left in the beaker we usually say it's the mother liquor we remove the mother liquor so that we can be able to obtain now our crystals and then the advantages of heating of a water bath like you saw we used the water bath that is the steam that was used to heat the solution we did not heat it directly on the heat this is allowing the mixture to like uh, reduce cracking on the evaporating dish it allows it to not to crack and it also allowing allows the mixture from splashing out because of the heat like excess heat that will occur if we heat this solution directly it's going to spill over and of course it's going to go outside so this is how crystallization occurs so let's look at a few questions on the same so before we look at the questions some of the applications of crystallization it helps in the extraction of salt from salty water especially this is the method where we get the salt that is used in kenya it usually happens in lake magadi and then also the extraction of sugar from sugar cane and it is also used to extract some medicinal substances from plants so let's look at a few questions so question number one says um given a mixture of lead to oxide ammonium chloride and sodium chloride describe how this mixture can be separated to obtain a sample of each so first of all we are going to look at what you have been given and then we are going to use the steps of the processes that we have already discussed to see which ones are applicable for this mixture if you look closely at the uh, compounds that you have been given in this mixture we have lead to oxide we have ammonium chloride and we have sodium chloride you notice that ammonium chloride is quite unique among us this mixture the uniqueness of ammonium chloride is that it sublimes when heated so we know in the steps that we discussed we started with the use of a magnet so there is no substance here that can uh, be separated by a magnet and then second was use uh, sublimation and we said uh, that the substance that can use sublimation here is ammonium chloride so first we need to remove that ammonium chloride how do we do so so you are going to say heat the mixture uh, to allow ammonium chloride to sublime it's going to cool on the cooler parts of the uh, evaporating dish 
and then it's going to be collected. So let's write that. So next, after removing now ammonium chloride, we are left with lead 2 oxide and sodium chloride. You notice in lead 2 chloride and sodium chloride, we know that we have worked with sodium chloride before. Sodium chloride is a table salt. If you put water in the same table salt, you notice uh, that it's going to dissolve in water unlike lead 2 oxide. So the next step you are going to do is add water to the remaining mixture. Sodium chloride is going to dissolve in water and then lead 2 oxide is not going to dissolve in the water. And in this case we form a mixture referred to as solid liquid mixture where the, the solid is insoluble, in this case the lead 2 oxide. So if we do that we said the process we are going to use is filtration. So we will filter the mixture so that we can be left with lead 2 oxide on the filter paper as the residue and the sodium chloride solution as the filtrate. So now we have um, dissolved the sodium chloride and lead 2 oxide in water. We have used the filter paper so the lead 2 oxide is the residue and the sodium chloride is the filtrate. So it means the so lead 2 oxide, the residue, we are able to obtain it, we can dry it uh, and wash it and dry it between the future papers and obtain it. So we are left with the sodium chloride uh, filtrate. So how do we get the sodium chloride uh, crystals? We are going to heat the solution uh, to, uh, to saturation and then allow the crystals to cool and then we uh, um, wash and dry the uh, crystals between filter papers. And that concludes the process. So we have obtained the ammonium chloride by subliming it, lead to oxide by separating it from the sodium chloride solution through filtration, and the sodium chloride crystals by crystallization. So this ends the question and ends also what you have been discussing. Next, we are going to look at um, a simple distillation method in our next lesson, how we separate liquid-liquid mixtures. So see you in the next lesson.